Well, let me say that we have had two days of remarkable dialogue. And I am in the unenviable position of saying, you've got to stop this. But before I close with some comments, let me say a few things about what produced this. And I think we've got to thank a lot of people who work behind the scenes who brought us all together. I want to thank, I'm mean, just sort of name, name some names, Lee Johnson, Sharon Bishop, Carl Colby, Larry Coldren, Lauren, uh, Sierra Tingle, Gina Bueller, Sally Benson, Jim Sweeney, and our quarterback, Mark Zoback. They spend hours and hours, I don't know how many phone calls over the last several months, every, once a week, to put all this together. I want to thank Ann Smead and her team back behind us to do all the hard work to make this happen, to, look at, to make us look good. And finally, Jay Precourt, who is really the godfather of this particular forum. And it's not just Jay, it is his family as well, Molly and the whole family who are hosting us out here. So let's just take a moment with a round of applause for, and thank them for all the hard work that they have put in. As Secretary Schultz said in the video conversation with me, this is an outstanding forum. But he also said, very importantly, you can, lot, you can learn a lot by keeping your ears open. So the question is, what did we learn? And here are a few things, three or four things that I, I'll, I, you know, I'll tell you what I learned. One is we learned from General Hayden that the world that we're entering now is quite uncertain. And frankly, that, you know, scared a lot of people. And that's the reality that we're living in today. So I want to take a, a reverse view. And let's talk about certainty. What are we certain about? Well, one thing we learned, and this is one certainty we should not forget, is that we in North America are blessed with the energy resources, both renewables and hydrocarbon. And the energy security that provides is really the envy of the rest of the world. I think Jitan mentioned that once before. It's really the envy of the rest of the world. And so in this uncertain world, we really have to focus on this certainty, because if we don't, the opportunity cost is just too high. It is really in our best self-interest to ensure that we don't abandon this focus on the North American energy. And for that, we certainly need new pipelines, and I'm so delighted to hear with the new administration coming in, we will have the opportunity to build that infrastructure between the countries and within our country on pipelines for natural gas and oil, transmission lines for high voltage DC transmission for our electricity network. But also, in addition to that, forums like this to form the human networks. And I think we need to keep this focus, keep this on next year, the year after that, and in the years in the future. So this is a very important fact. This is one certainty we cannot lose. What other certainties are there? Let's talk about the environment. As Karen mentioned in the panel right before this, and I agree with that, I have found no business, not a single business, or the CEO of a business who gets up in the morning and said, I want to pollute the environment. No one says that. If someone does, please let me know. But oftentimes what happens is some, somehow managing the or keeping the environment clean and the business are not aligned. And that's the challenge. It's like a human being. If your heart and mind are not aligned, you're unhappy. And if you really want to be happy, the heart and the mind need to be aligned. And the question is, how do we align them? And right now, we have an opportunity to create market mechanisms to align that. 
And if that's the case, the first thing I would say is that the industry needs long-term predictable signals with certainty so they can plan. And if these are market-based signals, that's even better. One of that certainty is that we have global warming going on. It is not changing. Do we understand all the details of climate change? And I can assure you, we don't. But global warming is happening. They're different. We don't understand the impact of that, but there's a risk. And for any risk, we need to take an insurance policy. We have a risk of fire at home, we take an insurance policy. We have floods, we take an insurance policy. Do we want that to happen? We don't. But we take an insurance policy. And I think in this case, I go back to Secretary Schultz. And he said that if you really want a market me mechanism for an insurance policy, let's put a price on carbon. And his suggestion is to put a tax on carbon that is revenue neutral so that there is no fiscal drag on the economy. And that's really the sensible way to do it. Now, I'm a realist. I've spent some time in Washington. I know this is not going to happen overnight. But it is this forums like this to show some leadership, to keep the dialogue open, because we never know when the timing is right. And I think we really need to focus and keep this going and introduce the market mechanism and let the people, the industry, innovate after that. Because that's one thing we know that we can innovate. That's the other certainty. And I'm confident that we can use the most renewable resource that we have, that is human ingenuity and persistence to solve our environmental challenges. Talking about human ingenuity and persistence, let us take stock of what has happened. Sometimes, you know, we are so involved in the little details, we forget to step back. And I would say, if you go back 10 years ago, and someone said that we're going to be exporting natural gas, um, you know, you would say, what are you smoking? And here we are, 10 years later, in 10 years, that's not too long, we are talking about exporting natural gas. And we, we came here not by accident. It was because of the ingenuity and dogged persistence of people like George Mitchell, who started this 30 years ago, 30 plus years ago and his team and the teams that he built and others in that ecosystem who innovated and brought down the cost of shale gas extraction to the point that it has now given us the security for United States, Canada, and Mexico. Who would have thought 10 years ago that solar would come down, the solar the cost of electricity from solar would come down by a factor of five in the last 10 years and become, and soon to become, one of the cheapest ways to produce electricity. It took the ingenuity and dogged persistence of the last 30 years of people like Dick Swanson, a Stanford person, to create something like sun power. It took 30 years or more. And the ecosystem that he developed to bring that down. We forget, we, you know, often, we forget what has happened 30 years ago, but that's what happened. And the area of energy efficiency we learned from Jim Sweeney and his panel, it has made a huge difference. And that started 40 years ago with a person called Art Rosenfeld. And Art just passed today. He passed away today. And, <clears throat> and he was a mentor, a hero to me. And it was his inspiration for a whole generation of inventors and entrepreneurs that have come up on energy efficiency and made a real impact, not just the United States, but the rest of the world. And I think we need to celebrate that in our forum out here to show what has happened and take stock of that. But as <clears throat> President Reagan once said, while I take inspiration from the past, like most Americans, 
a lift for the future. And I look around this room and the young generation out here, and I can see the George Mitchells and the Art Rosenfelds and the Dick Swansons right here. And it is your job to shape the future that they shaped it for us. And I think there's one certainty I can tell you that is very hard to predict exactly how they're going to innovate. But we have to support them. We have to fund them with the R&D and the entrepreneurship. We have to nurture the young people so that they can innovate and create the energy security, save the environment, and create the economic growth and jobs of the future. At the end of the day, it's all about our people. And I'm going to end with what President Reagan once said. We lead the world because, unique among other nations, we draw our people, our strength, from every country and every corner of the world. And by doing so, we continuously renew and enrich our nation. Thank you very much. Hope to see you back again next year. And the most important thing, we have a reception at the back of here. Thank you.